And I appreciate you. I got you. I got. I got. I got, I got to get you something. I wanted to, but I didn't have time. And but now I got some money. So I want to get her. I want to get her a dozen roses. And, I want to preach, not because she's my wife, but because she's the pastor of this church. Right, and I appreciate her and the gift that she is. The Bible said in Proverbs, you know, who could find a virtuous woman? There's a lot of women. There's a lot of pretty women, smart women, curvy women. He said, but who could find a virtuous woman? For her wealth is far above riches. You with me? He said, man, you know, in the Proverbs 31 talks about a, 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 a virtuous wife, a woman of God. And, and, uh, and, I, and I just wanted to, to uh, let you know that I appreciate your gift to me and to this church. Because uh, there's many nights where she's wept and cried and put her hand on me when no, no one else did. Amen. Amen. And she stood by my side when, none of, when some of you didn't. Right. Are you with me? And it's not because you didn't do it. It's because maybe you didn't have the opportunity. You know what I mean? But 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 Pastor Susan, she's not just a woman. She's not just a pastor, but she's a pastor in this church. And we need to honor her. We need to respect her as that. Amen. And I would tell anybody, and it doesn't matter who you are, that once you lose that respect for that woman of God, then find another church. Amen. Find another church where you can be respectful, where you can honor that pastor's wife and the pastor. You with me? Because in this house, we're, we're not going to do that. Yeah. We're going to we're going to treat her with honor and respect. Remember, I said whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Yeah. Whatever you sow, you sow discord, you sow strife, you sow anger, you sow whatever it is to to Pastor Susan, your kids, and everybody else in your life, and including business owners and everybody else. You're going to see it if it happened to you. Amen. Because whatever you sow, you're going to reap. Yeah. Amen. But if you honor, amen. amen. If you honor, and you, you, you respect, and you hold a high value in this ministry, that's what your children are going to do to you. They're going to raise you up. Amen. They're going to tell you, Mom, I love you. Amen. Mama, I want to, I want to cook for you tonight. Amen. Mama, I'm going to clean your house. Amen. They're going to honor you because you sold that. Remember that. Right. That's such a key to your Christian life. It ain't just coming to church. It's sowing that seed into other people's lives. And the reason Jesus could never do anything in Galilee is because people have dishonored him. They oh, you're just my mom. Right. You're just Pastor Vince's wife. Yeah. You're just Susan. And they never honored that gift. You're just Jesus. You're just Joseph's son. You're Mary's boy. I went to school with you. And he said he couldn't do any miracles in that city, save one or two that he did. Why? He said, because they didn't honor. He said, a prophet is without honor in his own amongst his own people. Okay. You gotta be careful. Those of you that are around us, those of you that are, are working with us, those of you who are related to us, those of you who are our sons and daughters or in-laws or whatever, remember that. Be careful. You with me? Don't don't become familiar with your pastors or or, or or whatever it is and think you can act a fool, act a certain way, and it's going to be okay. It'll affect everything you do in life. Amen. You won't get anything from God because of it. Amen. And I want you blessed. Amen. I don't do that. You know, I mean, I don't say that so people can honor us and respect us, so we can be high and lifted up and all these different things. No, I say it for your benefit. Amen. Because whatever you sow, you're going to reap. You with me? And there's been many, many times that woman has went home crying and people said dumb things and offended her and did all See, You don't see what you do to her. You just see what you think she's done to you. Yeah. Hello? Amen. 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 And you got to be careful in that. Because one day you're going to be a pastor's wife. Right. Yeah. And they're going to tear you up and they're going to crucify you on a cross. Amen. And the women will disrespect you. You with me? Amen. And things will happen. You'll say, God, I don't understand. And he said, remember, remember, remember the way you treated them? Yeah. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. So baby, reap it now. Amen. And it's going to be hard. I'll get you through it. I'm going to help you through it. It's going to be a lot of nights of prayer. Yeah. A lot of nights of fasting. A lot of nights of crying. Amen. Because of what you sowed back then. you got to reap it. It's just natural. It's just, yeah. you with me? Amen. And I, I appreciate my wife. Amen. Amen. For all that she is to this ministry. I couldn't do it without her. Amen. I don't know how she does it sometimes, how she takes them dollars, right. stretches them into 
A thousand. I don't know how she does it. Amen. Some of you, you understand that. You're paid, and the next day you're absolutely broke, so you can't pay your tithes and scratch your head. Not, but she takes the little God gives her, and she stretches it to, to even bless some of you. That's right. Hello? Right. Huh? Right. And it's like, I don't know how she does it, but I do appreciate her, and I want to thank her for that today. And, and let Pastor Susan know that her pastor... Uh, loves her and, and appreciates her. Amen. Amen. So anyway, I just wanted to say that. I want to talk to you this morning real quick. It's not a long message. It's something that I was just praying and I'm just asking God, God, give me a word for your people. And uh, uh, last night, he, well, the other day, he kind of dropped it in my spirit, but I'm so busy and stuff. I you know, I remember I kind of put it on the back burner and put it on low. There's a lot of stuff on low back there. And, uh, uh, you know, last night I was, I was getting into bed and I wasn't feeling very good. I was tired. Like I said yesterday, I spent hours and hours working on Alexis's quinceanera, uh, the message and different things like that. And, and uh, so I wasn't, you know, I wasn't really... You know, into listening or studying or anything, I just wanted to lay down and go to sleep. And God drops a message in my that message that He gave me the other day in my spirit. Just started giving me stuff as I went along. Uh, but if you were here Thursday night, you know that I talked about confidence. And um, how many were here? Most of you were here Thursday night. Do you remember about confidence? Um, this morning's title of the message is, Who Do You Think You Are? I should have put just, Who Do You Think You Are? Or, Who Do You Think You Are? That's the title of the message. Amen. I like to, God gives me like some some, some stuff to just, you with me? To, to get you. Amen. Who do you think you are? And it may sound like a negative thing, but uh, uh, I said, uh, Thursday night I shared a scripture out of Proverbs 23, 7. It said this, it says, For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Yeah. Just who do you think you are? Amen? Amen. And uh, Father, I thank you this morning for the word of God. I thank you this morning for the privilege and honor to speak for you, God. To be an oracle of God, the very heart of God, to be the mouthpiece for you, Lord. And I ask you for help because it's hard to stand up here sometimes. It's hard, Father, because sometimes people don't want to hear what I have to say. They want to listen, God. But I pray this morning that you would open the ears of even the hardest person, that you would unveil the hearts of even the hardest person, Father, watching by YouTube or Facebook or hearing this service, God. Father, touch them this morning. And God, help them see who they really are in you. Father, I thank you for it. Anoint my lips, my mind, my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Who do you think you are? Amen? amen? For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And I said Thursday night, I said, you know, whatever you think you are, that's who you're going to become. And a lot of times there's been so much negativity that's been poured into you as a young man or a young woman. Uh, when you were a little kid, by your brothers and sisters, by your mom and dad, because some of us have some mean people in our lives. Yeah. People that would hit us, people that would speak evil, people that would, the friends or brothers and sisters like Joseph. Remember Joseph in the Bible? Yeah, yeah. Who do you think you are, Joseph? And he said, hey, man, sh I don't know, bro, but I had a dream last night and you were bowing down. That's all I'm just saying. Amen. Hello. Amen. Huh? Amen. I'm just saying, you and all the other brothers tell you, man, bow down to me. That's all. I'm just telling you. I just wanted to share that with you. <laughs> they hated him. And, the God, and his dad made him a coat of many colors, right? Yeah. A, 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 a favorite coat. The other brothers didn't have no coat of many colors. I don't know what kind of coat you like. I see sometimes people wearing their famous football team. You with me? Yeah. Or, 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 or Oscar has a bad leather coat, a, bad, a white one he got from Korea. I always tell him, hey, that's my coat, bro. Take care of it. <laughs> sometimes we want leather coats. Sometimes we want, now me, I like to, I need to get me some suits. I said, I want to get me some more suits because none fit. 
And I want to give me some more nice food coats so I can represent the Lord right. Amen. And, and, and you know what I mean? And we have many things like that, but there's some special like this. This uh, Friday night, we went up to Denver. And uh, last time I was, we were here for, I think it was the other women's conference or the general, I don't remember what it was. But I, but Pastor Ray asked me, he said, I want you to come and minister for me one of these the Wednesdays. I said, all right. And, uh, and and I said, but hey, Pastor, I said, man, I want to give me a Pendleton, a nice Pendleton, man. I wore one because Pendletons, there are shirts that the homies wear. Yeah. And the homies from Khalifa is not from Pueblo. The flannels at Walmart for five bucks. <laughs> Hello. I got some of those, too. I'm not joking on them, but... But, uh, uh, you know, the Pendletons from L.A., they come from a certain store, and these Pendletons are, they're like the Cholo shirts. They're wool. They're all wool, and they cost about 200 bucks for one shirt. And I told Pastor, hey, you guys ain't got any Pendletons? He goes, I got one. What size you wear? And I told him, well, extra large now, Pastor. He goes, I got one for you. And uh, 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 he goes, when you come preach for me on that Wednesday, I'll give it to you. I go, all right. Well, two weeks ago, I went and preached for him on a Wednesday. So Thursday, I called him up and said, hey, Pastor, what are you doing? I said, we're coming down tomorrow. And he said, awesome, we'll see you then. I said, hey, 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 wait a minute. Whatever happened to that Pendleton you had, you said you'd give me? Sometimes you got to ask. Yeah. I never would ask him for anything. And I just said, hey, Pastor, what about that shirt? He goes, hey, I got it, brother. I'll give it to you. Tomorrow night, he goes, I'll give it to you. I go, all right. I went to the service and he gave me a Pendleton, man, and ah, when he goes, that's about $200 shirt, you know, so I said, thank you, Pastor. I put it on, I worked with the service, and I said, man, I said, but you know what's special about it? Not that it cost $200, yeah. but it was my pastor. Yeah, yeah. I put it on, buttoned it up, it was a little big, <laughs> but I said, I don't care if it's big or not, it was my pastor. Yeah. And, and I wore it with pride, and that's what, you know, you know what I mean? And it's like, man, nobody gave me stuff like that before. Mm -hmm. Pastors bought me suits. Man. Come in, look at the suits. I ain't got no money, but just look at them. Which one you like? I'll buy it, get it, take it, and have them tailor it. Thank you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Joseph's dad bought him and made him a coat of many colors, gave him favor. Man. But not everybody around you is going to like you. You know how many pastors don't like you in this city? Yeah, man. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm a threat. I don't have a big church, so what's your trip? Yeah, man. I don't understand why they're so jealous and why they hate me. Hate the other brother you go to lunch with, not me. Take me to lunch, Cliff. <laughs> they were jealous of him. They hated him, and they put him in a, a sister, and they, they said they're going to kill him. They planned on killing him because he had favor, because who he was, because he had royalty on, because dad favored him. Amen. I don't know about you, but you understand the word grace means favor. Amen. God's unmerited favor. You can't earn it. You don't deserve it. Right. It's something God gives to you. Amen. Hmm? Amen. And that's why I keep talking. Hey, Lord. Like I call pastor. What about that shirt? Hey, Lord. What about all these people you gave me in the vision? Where are they at? Amen. They're coming, Amen. Me, huh? Amen. They're coming. Amen. Don't Amen. worry, I got it for you. You'll get it. All right, Lord, oh, remember me. It's my prayer. Right. Remember Amen. me, Lord. Amen. A thief on the cross, God saves you because he's asking you to remember. Remember me. Remember my wife and I and our sacrifice. Amen. Remember the years and years of serving you, God, and running hard for you and giving our lives and our finances. Remember me, Lord. Right, Amen. Man, man. He's like, he's like right? remember the unjust judge? He said, that unjust judge gave you what you needed. He goes, he didn't even believe in God. He didn't even care about you. How much more will your heavenly Father give you? You with me? Man. Amen. Amen. Come on. Man. I'm like, remember me, Lord. Remember me. See, I don't know if you guys understand this, but I want to make you snap. I want you to understand, hey, wait a minute. I'm favored. Amen. I'm blessed. Amen. I'm a daughter of God. Because see how the, the devil beats you down so long and so many men in your life and all this different stuff that beat you down or others or things or even the way you feel about yourself beat you down for years. And God says that's because the, there's a call on your life. Amen. Amen. See, because I told you, Queen Esther, come up, Queen Alex. Amen. 
I can't see myself like that. It's hard. How many of you have a hard time seeing yourself like that? Amen. I do. Amen. I've had a long time and a hard time seeing myself as a king's kid. Right. Seeing myself as King Vincent. <laughs> hmm? Amen. That's hard. Yeah. Because I was told you're worthless. That's right. I was told you're nothing. That's right. Amen. I was beat down not with hands and fists, but with words. That's right. I was told all my life different things, and I felt ugly about myself for many years. Amen. You with me? Amen. I don't know if you like. I hate pictures. Now you know. Now they're right. <laughs> I hated yeah. pictures, Alex. Yeah. yeah. Because I would look at the pictures and I would see that fat man, that ugly man. Right. I didn't see the king's kid. Amen. I didn't see who God said I am. Right. Other people see me that way, Amen. but I didn't see my, my wife said, I never do. I never seen you as being 350 pounds. Amen. She said, I loved you. Amen. I seen Vince. I seen who I loved. I seen who I gave my heart to. Amen. I didn't see heavy. I didn't see 50, five size 50 pants or anything like that. I seen my husband. That was my husband. And I said, yeah, but what I see, that's what matters. That's right. <laughs> Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. That's right, man. Come on, somebody. Yeah, right. And as you see in your heart, people are going to perceive you as that very thing. That's right. I always used to say going to Denver, I hate the conferences because I go up there and they don't like me anyway. I always get overlooked. Yeah. Everybody, hey, where's the pastors? Oh, they all got, got in the van and went to go eat. I got overlooked. Yeah. How do you think that makes me feel? Because right, I feel bad about myself already. They yeah. don't like me. Yeah. I don't need them. Right. That's why a lot of people left their church. They don't like me. Right. And you know what? I don't need them either with their fists like this, wanting to fight. And it wasn't nothing because what we did. It was nothing that my pastor did. And maybe God used him to start building something in me. Right, it was me looking at myself and saying, come on, son, you're worthy. Son, after 23 years, you're one of the only pastors that are still standing for Pastor Ray and his ministry. Amen. All them other ones that stood up there, man, that had mega churches and all this stuff, they all fell. Yeah. They all ran off with their secretaries. Yeah. They all backslid on dope and died a, a drug addict again. And you said they're better than you. Where are they now, son? You're the only one still standing there. And guess who's always felt like the stepson? Man. Have you guys ever felt like that? Yeah. Like a stepkid. Yeah, man. Like a step. And you know what? It's not. It's not that. That it's any, you know what I mean? It's anyone's fault, but it's the way you perceive yourself. That's right, man. It's the way you feel. That's right. Some people don't have this problem. Some people, their problem is thinking more highly of themselves than they ought. That's right, man. And right. that's more dangerous. Yeah. People like that, a lot of them don't get saved. They all go to hell. Yeah. You with me? Amen. Not all of them. Amen. You with me? But most of them. Because they think they're all that. They don't need God. Amen. You with me? Amen. We know we need God. That's you right. with me? That's but right. God's like, well, then if I'm in you, then if I live inside of you, you got to understand you're different now. Right. If any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Amen. The old has gone, the new has come. But so you got to start understanding, I must renew my mind. I must be transformed in the, by the renewing of my mind. Right. By the word of God to realize who I am in Christ. Right, man. Huh? Amen. You with me? Amen. You, you remember the movie Shallow Now? Yeah. It's been all over the TV lately. <laughs> but that dude was so into beautiful, shapely, thin women. Somebody changed his mind. I don't remember the guy's name, but he changed his mind on the way he seen people. Now he was seeing people, woman that he was dating was, was a bigger woman. But he's seen the beauty inside of her. Yeah. He's seen the heart inside of her. Yeah. And he didn't see people for their disability. See, that's the way God thinks, I believe. Amen. He says, man looks on the outward appearance. But I, the Lord, I look upon the heart. Amen. 
And see, he would see even disabled people, people that were maybe deformed in their faces and teeth that were split wide open and, you know what I mean, different things that others would make fun of. He's seen them now as beautiful people, as people worthy of his friendship and worthy of his time and his dating. Yeah, you with me? You see, a lot of us, even you ladies, you see like that. You see the outward appearance of a man. You're not looking on the heart. Right. You're not looking at the faithful one with his word of God and, and serving and do this and that in the church somewhere. This and that. You're looking at all the same floor. There you go, chess. Huh? Right, there's, a, there's a guy, at, at, uh, Pastor Ray's, I just see him, at, and I think it was Pastor Julio's um, son in law or something. He, he dressed like this the other night, and I said, man, the guy's trying to be like me. You can't be like me. You can't ever be like me. But he's bigger. He's muscles, man. And he was at the altar with his hat on. He's just worshiping the Lord. The guy think he is. Just who do you think you are is the title of our message. I said, but he was wearing the tan sweater like this and the chain and all this. You know what I mean? And I'm like... Man, that dude looks good. Huh? Yeah. I said, well, who do you think you are? That's right. Who do you see yourself? Because that's who you're going to portray to people. Right, it's not, remember the, the, the movie Black Swan or, yeah. or Swan, something like that, where yeah. they would take people who were heavy set, who were this or that, they work them out, they do all this, they have a lot of flab and fat left on them, they would cut it off, they would do surgery, they would close the gap. They would plant hair plugs. They would do her extensions. They would beautify her face. Put them new teeth. Yeah. And they would stand there and you'd be like, oh, look at them. They look like Miss America or, or Mr. Universe up there. Yeah. And you'd be like, my God. And, and, and they said the problem with that was when they got, they won or they were in the show and they did all this stuff that, 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 that they still, I went home and they needed psychiatric treatment because they all they, they didn't see they didn't know the person in the mirror. Right. Everything could be changed on your outward, but if your heart's not changed, you're gonna still portray that person you've always been, even if it looks good. Amen. You can put a, a bubble bath, a pig in bubble bath, and paint their little nails and put gold chains on them and, and, and what are they food what are the things that ladies wear? Like the Phyllis Diller used to wear yeah. boas, boas and, <laughs> and, and, and all that stuff and new dresses and all this, but a pig is a pig is a pig. Right. They'll look in the mirror and they won't see the new dress or the high heels and they'll see a pig in dress like Miss Piggy. Yeah. And the people had to get psychiatric care and some of them even blew up to back to where they were and things, you know, all this stuff because they were never changed in their hearts. And they weren't able to see because as a man thinks, right. so is he. Amen. That's who you are. Amen. You're always going to be uh, You're always going to be fat. You're always going to be this until your heart's changed, until you see yourself for who God says you are. Right. I've been have, I have had so many opportunities and so many obstacles of even people in our own church. Amen. You with me? That, that I've had to overcome rejection and all this other stuff to say, you know what? I'm still standing. Amen. I, I'm a man of God, Lord. Amen. You know how hard it's been for me over the years to believe in myself. Right. To believe that I have a message for people. Amen. To say what I said this morning about, you with me? About God's favor and God's choices on my life. And these other guys are just haters. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because I've always looked at them and said, you know what? They got big churches. They've got lots of money. You with me? Yeah. And I had the guy come to me one time. We were at Nachos, my wife and I. And we were walking out of Nachos one night. You see, when you have a low self-esteem or a bad complex, you could be happy. And doing this, somebody just say one little stupid word and just tear you up. Yeah. And we walked out of Nachos one night, my wife and I, and the, and the transient, I believe it was a demon from hell. He comes and he says, you know what? He, he, he stops us and he, he looked at me and he looked at my wife and he says, why are you with somebody like this? And he just, 
I said, like them jumpers, you unplug them, they just deflate. I said, this guy, I don't know who this demon is, who this devil transient is, but I said, he, he couldn't have said them anything worse than that. Because yeah. that's what my dad told me all my life. Right. You're nothing, you're fat, you're lazy, you're never going to amount to anything. <laughs> and when that dude said that that day, I was so crushed because I said, yes, my wife's a beautiful woman. And they was like, how did she, how did you end up with this guy? Remember I talked about grace and favor? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. No matter what you, what people might perceive, God sees you as something. God says, son, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bless you with a virtuous woman. Amen. And I'm gonna, she's not gonna be too bad to look at either. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Why is she with you? I, feel, I wish I would have been today. Because after I slapped him upside his head, I would have told him, because Mifa, I'm a favorite of God. Amen. A favorite of the Lord. Amen. I'm sorry for hitting you. Please don't kill me right now. In Jesus' name, help him up. Give him a buck. I'm a favorite of God. Amen. Amen. You with me? Amen. And that's the way God wants you to see yourself. Amen. You can change the outward. You can go to Ross and buy you nice clothes and all this different stuff. But if your heart's ugly and if you're selfish and if you're conceited and all this stuff, it doesn't matter because you're just covering up a pig. Man. See, God wants to give you the fruit of the Spirit. Right. He wants right. to change your life and change your heart, but change your self perspective. Amen. Change the way you see yourself. Change the way you think. Amen. You with me? Amen. And can I tell you this too? This is for free. That that it also takes hard work too. That's right. Yeah. Hmm? That's right. Yeah. Somebody said the other day, "Oh, I don't like my the way I look. I, you know, I'm a fat and this and that." And I, and I didn't say no. I just said, "Well, what are you gonna do about it? Right. Yeah. What are you gonna do about it? Man. It's not easy to get out there and exercise. It's not get easy to get out there and hit the gym or go walking or whatever it is you do. You know, and exercise calisthenic. That's not easy. That's right, man." You with me? Yeah, yeah. But I want to change who I am, Lord. That's right. That's Give me the right. strength. Amen. Amen. Give me the ability to change who I am so that I can be happy with who I am, Lord. Right, yeah. So that I can see myself as not only, yes, I'm loved, and, but, but I can look in the mirror and say, you know what, man? You ain't half bad. That's right, man. Huh? Amen. And be happy with with what God who God made you. That's right. And if you don't like it, change it. Amen. You with me? Well, I need my teeth fixed. Well, then figure out a way. If you don't have insurance, then save money and go get them fixed. Yeah. It may take you five years. Yeah. But if you don't like it, then just save and do it. That's right, man. I don't like my weight. I don't like this. Well, let's just change it. Yeah. I don't like my hair. I don't like. Well, change it. Right. Stuff like that you can change. Amen. The heart you can't. Only God can change. That's right, man. And as you think in your heart, that's what you're going to portray to others. A lot of people are single today because they're pushing off every man that comes around, every woman that comes around. They, 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 they don't like themselves, but they're Christian. Yeah. Man, it's taken me years, guys. You don't even know the struggle that I've had in the, in the wife that stood by my side when I hated who I was. Yeah. Yeah. He says this in Ephesians 5, he says, son, love your wife. As Christ loved the church, gave himself for it. Yeah. How do you love somebody when you, when you don't love yourself? Right. Huh? Right. I have to learn to love myself. I have to learn to get in the Word, let His Word change me to help love myself so that I can really love my wife. Amen. Because hmm? if not, if you get guys out there who want to love you out yeah, for what, five minutes? Yeah. Because they don't know how to love you. We just buried a, a girl this week. Because she got involved with some guy and he was abusive and she ended up dead. They said she killed herself. And from what I understand, the gunshot wound was back here. I don't know. It's kind of hard to shoot yourself in the back of the head. Yeah. yeah. But the guy says he loved her. You with me? Yeah. He didn't love himself. Right. If he would have loved himself, he would have never hurt her. He would have never hit her. He would have never killed yeah. her. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You guys want people like that in your life. They're going to lift you up. They're going to encourage you, man, you're beautiful. Yeah. 
You with me? Man, you're you're you with me? Not not oh you're bad, you're ugly, you went to this town to look like that lady and all this stuff. Man, you know what? I don't need you. I don't need that. You're you're the you're of the devil. Right. Your father. Right. I don't need you saying stuff like that. Right. Huh? Because right. you know what? I, I know who I am in Christ. And I better get to it now because I get to ramble and just who do you think you are? We learned Thursday night in Romans chapter 8 that we are more than conquerors. Amen. Just who do you think you are? I'm more than a conqueror. Hello? Amen. I'm more than a conqueror. That's who I am, devil. Amen. Amen. Look at the definition of conqueror. The definition is a people or a person who conquered uh, who conquers or or places oh, excuse me, let me let me start again. A person who, who conquers a place or people. That's who a conquer is. A person who conquers a place, like a city, a country, or its people. It's also one who wins. I like this. One who wins, subdues, or overcomes. One who wins, subdues, or overcomes his enemy. Re Revelation 12, 11 says that we overcame him, the dragon. The biggest enemy we have. There's nobody bigger than the devil. And Revelation 12, 11 says we overcame him. Yes. How? By the blood of Jesus, by what He did on the cross of Calvary, by He that He gave His life, shed His blood for me, Amen. by the word of our testimony. Amen. What's your testimony? Well, my testimony is in 1978 that I, you know, gave my life to the Lord at Billy Graham Crusade, and and that's not your testimony. That, that, that is to an effect. You know what my testimony is? If I asked you, you say, oh yeah, you were a gang member, you were shot in the face, and you were 19, and, and, and then you were pronounced dead, but the Lord raised you up, and you got saved, and your wife, you came in, and God healed your family, and, that would, and I said, no, I know my testimony, that's part of it, yeah. that's the beginning, but that's not my testimony, you know what my testimony is, is that today I'm a pastor, today I'm a man of God, Today I love Jesus Christ, and today after 35, four years, I'm still walking for God. I might have a limp with some cracks, and, and, and you know, uh, you know, when I say slips, drips, and erratic shifts, and but I'm still walking. How about you? I'm still going for Jesus. I haven't quit through all the stuff I've been through. I haven't given up. I, I realize I have to leave my family. This family of mine ain't gonna serve the Lord unless I'm leading them. Right. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. I can't wait for my wife to say, babe, come to church and this and that. I can't do that. I can't afford to. I'm the leader. Right. Right. I'm the head of a family. Yeah. You with me? Yeah. My wife is not the head of my family. I am. That's right. If I would have made a decision to say after after I was shot and everything else, I, you know what I mean? I'm just going to start, you know, I'm going to get that, dude. You watch. I'm going to retaliate, and my cousins and my homies and everybody else, we would have killed that man. Amen. And we're going to make sure he pays and his family. And I'm going to serve, I'm going to, I'm going to live for the way I used to. And man, even though I might be blind or whatever, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to I'll get around and I'll get to the, I mean, you guys know Brother Anthony, Brian Anthony? Yeah. He can't see, but he's still on crack. Yeah. Or I hope he's not, but that's at least the last time I heard. He's still in the borracha. He's still partying in the houses around his. Still with girls, blind. Huh? I could have done the same thing. I could have taken the same route. Yeah. Hmm? But I said, you know what? I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to live for God. And I told all my friends, listen, don't come around me at all. If you want to live for the world, you want to drink and do all this, don't come around me. Amen. Do me a favor, don't come back. Amen. And I said, because I'm going to serve the Lord. Amen. My wife didn't say it, I said it. Amen. My wife wasn't leading, I was. Amen. I made my mind up, this is what I'm going to do. That's why I tell you today, you got to make your mind up. Yeah. 
that I'm not just going to come and sit at New Hope Ministries in the chair. Right, man. I'm going to do something great for God. Amen. I'm going to be somebody because that's who he called me to be. Right, man. Hello. Amen. Amen. Come on now. That's right. Hmm? More than a conqueror. He said you're more than somebody who conquers a people or places. You're more than a winner. Amen. Huh? Amen. You're more than a subduer. You're more than an overcomer. You're more than that. That's what he said. Amen. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, But you, he's talking to you. Say that. He's talking to me. He's talking to me. But you are a chosen generation. You know what this time is? You know what this what our city is right now, 2019? A chosen generation. Amen. The Bible says David ministered. David touched those in his generation. Amen. That's why I need some of you younger ones. Amen. You with me? Amen. To rise up in your 30s. To rise up in your teenage years. To touch your generation for God. Because I might not be able to. Right. I have a hard enough time with the 40 and 50 year olds and the 60 year olds. Amen. Getting them to believe. Right, man. I need somebody to touch the 30, somebody to touch the 20, somebody to touch the teenagers, man. somebody to touch the children for God. Right, man. Even kids, man. I'm taking anybody. <laughs> the Bible says David raised up an army and become the mighty army of David and, he, and God sent to him those that were in debt, those that were discouraged, those that were you not know, defeated. <laughs> And I'm like, gee, God, that's heavy duty. You could have sent him the elect, man, the best. You sent him the ones that have no money. All broke and busted, and they got dead on top of that. Discouraged. I can't do it. I'll never, you know, I'm all this stuff. You with me? That were in despair and all this different stuff, giving up, quitters, and all that. Just build an army with those. That's cold, Lord. Right. God said, that's why, that's, why, that's why I get the glory. Because I'm going to take that bunch of people and I'm going to make them a mighty army for God. That's right, man. Hello, somebody. Yeah. He says, but you, speaking of you, are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You're royalty, man. Amen. Hello. Amen. He says, in a holy nation, God made you holy. Amen. Hello? Amen. A peculiar people. What does the NLT say there for a peculiar people? Anybody know? Anybody got a different translation? Where is that the, I don't know if that's the new living. A peculiar people. I tell them, you're, you're kind of strange. How many know you're kind of strange? Just shake your head, Oscar. Wake up. Just cry like this. We're a little strange here in your whole ministry. Nevertheless, God's using us. Because he uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and the base thing. Come on. Amen. 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 Huh? We're royal priests. Amen. Why? Why did God call you? Why did God choose you? Why are you royalty? That we should um, show forth the praises of him who's called us out of darkness Amen. into his marvelous Amen. light. Amen. It didn't say come and sit at church somewhere and look pretty. That's right. So God raised you up as a warrior, as a man of God, as a woman of God. Amen. Have you ever seen Zena, the warrior princess, ladies? Amen. I can see you as it. I expect you to go home. You can come back by two and be the Zena. I want to see that. Huh? You're a king's kid, I put. Do you understand that? You're a king's kid today? Amen. Hmm? See, some of you, it's hard to even say that. Right. Because you still think you're scum. Yeah. You still think you're what he said you were. What they said you were, what they called you, and maybe even how you you know that you know that people that feel a certain way about themselves, like I said I did? Why do they why do they feel like that? Because they were born like that? 
or was it because people told them that about right. themselves? Right. Right. People made them feel about themselves. Right. You with me? Yeah. It's hard, man, especially being a teenager. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I look at my granddaughter, Lexi, and she's a little bit bigger in size. But she don't realize how beautiful she is. Yeah. And, but it's hard for her, you know what I mean? Oh, go look for a dress. Well, there's a, there, you know, they got the size two. Come on. Yeah. Well, how do you think that makes I never, I hated the shop. Mm -hmm. How many of you ever hated the shop? Because no. I, I never right. found anything at yeah. Ross. Right. They don't have 50s. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. They don't have big old pants and, you know, you're, man, you can't find nothing there. So you get all discouraged and, you know. I hated it, man. I hated it. And one, I said, one day, I'm going to be able to go into Walmart or wherever it is, into any of the stores, and find, hey, do you have 38s? They always have 38s. <laughs> you know when the last time I wore 38 pounds was? When I was maybe 13 or 14 years old, and, and, I'm, and I'm growing up. Might have been 10 or 11 that I would wear 38 size pants. And that's the highest pants most stores go to in men's. And I would always hate that because I would I would never want to take to try on clothes because I said they ain't gonna fit me anyway. And I hated it and I felt bad for my I felt bad about myself. Yeah. And I would say one of these days I'm gonna go into one of these shops and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna, and I'm gonna be able to try on any of the nice clothes I see right there. Right. Not have to go to Denver to the XXX Alpine store <laughs> or something like that. But I'll be able to go to any store that I want to and say, hey, give me those jeans right there at, at Old Navy. Yeah. Or any of these stores. Give me an extra large. Yeah. But you wear 2X, huh? Used to. Yeah. Used to yeah. wear 3X. Sometimes we're pushing 4X. Yeah. Give me extra large and it's baggy. Amen. <laughs> hmm? yeah. And, and are you with me? Yeah. Man, I hated that. And I know the way my granddaughter feels. And I know the way some of the other kids feel. And it hurts, man. It hurts bad because you, you know, you think I have to take this ugly Clifford, who, 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 who that's cause the only one I can get. And it's like God would never give me a handsome man that loves Jesus. Why not? That's right, man. Why not? That's right, man. I think you can. Yeah. Hmm? That's right. You're a king's kid. Revelations one six says this. It says, and, and uh, you know, go to it real quick, y'all. Because I have I have Revelations 1 6 and it says, And have made us kings and priests. He made us kings and priests unto God. Hello? Amen. And his and his father, unto God and his father. It says, To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. But I wanted to read verse 5 real fast and 6, Al, if you want to read that, because it's talking to us about what Jesus did for us and how because of what he did for us, now we can see ourselves for who we really are, King's kids. Amen. Read it, Al. Amen. And from Jesus Christ, he is the faithful witness to these things, the first to rise from the dead and the ruler of all the kings of the world. A glory to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by shedding his blood for us. He made us a kingdom of priests for God, his Father. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. I'm a king's kid. Amen. Amen. Say that with me. I'm a king's kid. I'm a king's kid. Mm -hmm. There's been some king's kids who made some bad decisions in life. Yeah. Huh? Amen. There's been a lot of people that come to this church giving their lives to Jesus that are king's kids, but they're prodigals now. Yeah. They're out there running the streets of Pueblo. That's right. They're in Denver. Yeah. They're in Texas. Yeah. California. Amen. In Washington. Amen. Huh? Amen. Phoenix and, and in Miami. Yeah. Different countries that gave their lives to Jesus. Right, man. And they rebelled and they ran away from, from God. Amen. But nevertheless, they're king's kids. That's right. Our job is to reach them. Amen. Our job is to pray for them. That's right. You with me? Amen. These king's kids run away, but they get God lets them. God says, You want to ask them? Go ahead. Do your little body, but they watch what's gonna happen. Yeah. You cannot have prosperity and wealth and party and strip clubs and all this different stuff and not pay for it. That's right, man. You're gonna pay for it. Amen. You're gonna pay for it with your money and you're gonna pay for it with your life. That's right. 
And they end up, he ended up after spending all his wealth in a pig's pen. You guys know the story. Yeah. And the Bible says his dad would look every day for him. And I believe his dad would pray and say, God, man, God, my son, he's out there, Lord. Yeah, reach him, God, yeah. convict his heart, yeah. change him, Lord, bring him home. Yeah. And that boy went to the pig's pen and was so hungry, man. Hunger has a way of bringing you to your senses. Yeah. Hmm? That's right. Come on now. That's right. And that's why we got to let them sometimes. Go, oh, get hungry. I'm not going to run. I'm not going to give you $20. I'm not going to buy you Taco Bell. You're hungry. You're out there. When you're ready, come home. Yeah. I'll feed you. I got a feast here. Huh? Right. And that boy, man, came to his senses in that pig pen. And guess what? He came home. He came home to his father and repented before God and his dad. Amen. And the, and the dad said this. He said, you know what? Kill the fatted calf. He said, bring the royal robe because his son sold everything, his Jordans, everything. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. His, his oh, a raider coat. Yeah. Sold everything. Right. And he was naked. Yeah. He only had his wife Peter and his boxers on coming home. Yeah. The only way God knew him was because of the gangster that he had. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. He says, my son, he ran and he hugged him. He didn't beat him, tell him, you know what, you get out of here, you good for nothing. He hugged him and loved him, welcomed him home. He says, get my son some shoes. Amen. Put his feet, shoes on his feet. Amen. Put a roll, roll, remember Joseph's roll, roll on him. Yeah. Hmm? And he says, hey, put that ring on his finger. That ring represented, it represented authority. Right. Because the ring gave him power now. He's I'm the king's kid. Amen. You with me? Amen. I have authority from God. I have the royalty, man. He didn't tell me you stink. He didn't tell me. He put his coat back on me. There's so many people we have to reach and tell them, sis, come back home. Amen. Amen. Brother, come back to God, man. Amen. Why are you out there? Come to your senses. And we need to pray that way. Amen. Hmm? Amen. That the king's kids would come home. Because even though he went and made a mess and looked just like the world, still in his heart he was what? He was a king's kid. Amen. 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 And to whom was he saying this? But to as many, and this is in John chapter 1 verse 12, this is who is a king's kid. But to as many as did receive and welcome him, Jesus, Remember, they didn't just believe on him. They didn't just think about him and say, oh yeah, I love God. They said they received him. To receive means you got to take something. You, got, you can't just look at it and say, well, that's cool. Thank you, God. You have to take it for yourself. He received the gift of Jesus. Amen. And welcomed it. Thank you, God. He was excited for it. Amen. It says, he, to, to those that did that, he gave the right, the authority, the privilege to become children of God. Amen. He gave you that right, the authority, the privilege to become the king's kids. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. To become children of God. That is, to those, to them, who believed in, now watch this, well, I believe in God, now this is what belief means. It doesn't mean I just have a mental ascent of a God sitting up there in the throne, oh yeah, he thought he's got Alzheimer's. He said, to those who believed in, adhere to, that means you listen to. That's right. Hello. That's right. That means you listen to his word. Amen. You listen to his voice. He said, my sheep, Hear my voice. Right. And the voice of the stranger, they will not follow. Right, so he's talking to those who believe. What does it mean to adhere to? To trust him Amen. and rely on Amen. him. Amen? Amen. Or his name on Jesus. That's who's king's kids. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Have you received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Hmm? Yeah. Have you believed in him? Trusted and relied on him? Amen? Amen. Amen. If you haven't, 
You or if you have, excuse me, you are a child of God. I don't care what anybody else tells you. The Bible says you're a child of God. If you believe and receive, rely on trust in God. You're a child of Him. He gave you that authority, that right. Amen. Hmm? Amen. If you haven't, today is an appointed day for you to become a child of God. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse two says, "For God says." At just the right time, I helped you. Come on. Is it at just the right time? I uh, I think it says heard yeah. or healed. Heard? heard? I heard you out. I heard you? Yeah. At just the right time, I heard you. On the day of salvation, he says, I helped you. Amen. He said, indeed. The right time is now. Now is the time to serve Him. Today is the day of salvation. Come on. It says, "Give." I, I wrote this. I said, "Give yourselves to God today, so that you can become a child of God, more than a conqueror." Amen. Amen. A chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a king or a queen for God. Amen. I was thinking about that and I said, you know that, that, that lady they call Queen Latifah? Yeah. You know Queen Latifah and I really don't know her story or anything, but man, she came up. Yeah. Hmm? Amen. And you know what? Big girl. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. Big girl. She was different. Remember seeing the show set it off? Yeah. Did she look different than the other ladies? Yeah. Some of those ladies in our eyes were, you know, beautiful women. <laughs> the Queen of Tifa was like bigger and you with me? Mm -hmm. And but she seen herself as a queen before anybody else ever did. Yeah. She seen herself making movies. She seen herself succeeding in life. She seen herself as a queen. And this is a this is a carnal mind. Yeah. This ain't a woman of God. Yeah. This, you know, I, I hope maybe she got saved or one day will get saved. But I'm just saying in the natural, that's who she sees to herself as. When people probably laugh at her, say, I'm not to date you. You're too big. Yeah. Yeah. You have a scar on your forehead. Yeah. Sometimes people just see the, the, the ugly, the, the scar, the hurt. You with me? Yeah. She's seen herself as a queen. I was thinking that all there. I was like, hey, Lord, that's heavy duty. Yeah. And today she's a millionaire. Yeah. Because you're the star of Steve Martin and all these different men and women in movies, and she's a queen. You ever seen her in that one where she's Ella Kuja's her boyfriend? Yeah. She thinks she's bad, so she goes spend <laughs> everything she has. She put the baddest clothes on, ate, she says, I want everything to eat. I'm going to taste everything. I'm going to enjoy life. See, that's what God wants for you. Amen. But for in reality, yeah. an abundant life, I should have said earlier. Amen. He came to give you life, but not just some life. All right, all right, I'll just struggle through the work. Here I am, the dragon yourself. You know what I mean? No, man. He came to give you life abundantly. Amen. A bad life, an awesome life, a blessed life. Mm -hmm. Come on. That's right. You're a king, you're a queen. Amen. And I wrote some of these phrases down. I said, I am what God says I am. Hello. Amen. I am who God says I am. Right. I have what God says I have. Amen. He said He's freely. How much more with this? And, and would God freely give us all things. That's right. He said, if you ask anything in my name, I'll give it to you. That's right. That's why I said a hundred thousand dollars to pay this building off. It's not for me. That's right. It's for God. Amen. And God, that, for Him, that's nothing. Right. God's like, these people are using it to raise some money to do a program, not their building. Yeah. Huh? Right. Makes sense? Yeah. I have what God says I have. Amen. I can do what God says I can do. I said the other day, Philippians 4.13 says what? Say it like you mean it now. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All things means what? Everything. Some things. All things. Amen. Check this out. It says, uh, I am the head and not the tail. Amen. Soy la cabeza y no la cola. 
I like that one. Spanish. <laughs> yeah. Koala. I don't who wants to be a koala here today. Lift your hand. We never want to be back in that area. Stinky back there. Ugly back there. We want to be the head leading the way. Amen. Not the waste. Amen. Uh, sometimes in life we felt like the waste. Yeah. That's why I love bringing hope to people who are on the streets and people who are behind prison walls of murder and all this stuff or an addict to say, man, they're nowhere. I told one of the men who was a pastor in this church, sister, who lives on the streets, who is a heroin addict today. And he says, Pastor, I, I lost, I blew it. There's no way out. I can't see no hope in my life. I said, brother, there's hope for you. Amen. God can Amen. restore you. Right. Amen. Huh? Amen. And I love preaching hope. I love giving hope. I love letting people know why. Because the next one says that I am a treasure. Now this is what you got to say about yourself. I'm a treasure out of darkness. Amen. Amen. Didn't that what he said in First Peter 2.9? Yeah. Called you out of darkness to proclaim his marvelous life. I'm a treasure out of darkness. Yeah. Man. I'm a hidden, I'm hidden riches in the secret places. That's right. Huh? That's right. They didn't know they were getting the jam when they got me. Amen. That's what you got to think. Amen. That's what you got to see yourself right. as. Amen. That's what I want my granddaughter to know and yeah. understand and think about herself, so she don't let some cochino or some dirty man or anybody ever touch her or do anything. You would mean she didn't give them the permission to do right. because she feels less about herself right. or anything like that. I don't Amen. think so. You're a princess. Amen. Who said? My grandpa Amen. said that too. I'm a treasure out of darkness. I'm hidden riches in secret places. Amen. Amen. Many are called, but not me. I'm chosen. Amen. I'm Amen. chosen. Amen. 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 That's who you are. That's, right. That's who you are. Amen. Stand with me this morning. Amen. Now, can I tell you that that was not a message, Pastor, just made up and brought for you? You know, because he's about to take an offering and he wants you to give. No, I did that for you. God did that for you. He put it in me. You with me? That last part, he said, I am. Many are called. But I am chosen. Hmm. And you got to see yourself like that. Dina set aside. God chose me. I'm favored. When God looks down in the service, you know, one night, Dina, we were in Denver, Colorado. I said, Heritage Christian Center. I don't know how many thousands of pastors were in this building. These are pastors that have big churches. I was just there, you know, me and one of my guys. And I just have a little church. And remember, I didn't really feel special. I didn't really think anything of myself. I thought, you know, bless these pastors, God here, that are here to do all this stuff. And and uh, the, the apostle that was there, heavy man, this guy has mega churches, millions of dollars, all this stuff. This apostle was in the service that night preaching, and he preached a good word, and then he said, you know what, I know you guys want me to pray for you, but I'm not going to pray for any of you tonight. He said, God told me not to pray for any of you tonight. I'm just going to turn the service over, but before I do, I would like to pray for that one pastor there. Uh, you know, I can't see anybody. I'm just like, amen, hey, Lord bless him. <laughs> They're like, he's talking to you. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it's you. Come up here. He said, I'm not praying for any of these pastors, but for you. Amen. He said, I'm going to release an anointing on your life. Amen. Come on. Amen. And he prayed for me. And I'm telling you, I've never felt a tangible anointing like I have that night. I found the anointing of God, and guess, remember I told you Joel Osteen's doing that? Yeah. Get some of this off, man. It's too crazy. I got favor of God. Get it off. Huh? Yeah. I'm walking away from that. Remember the way I was thinking. Yeah. I knew you guys are better than me. I knew these guys are better than me. And this and that. God said, go call them. Are these all the sons you have here? Is that? He said, if it is, and I'm going to come back in nine months. Hello. Yeah. Is it because these, these the ones that are here are not the ones that I called, not the ones that I chose. The prophet says, is, do you have any other sons? I go, well, there's this one, but he's a ruddy little lad. He's just a skinny little white boy with freckles and red face. And he's really nobody. He just watches the sheep. And the prophet of God says, get him. Bring him here. 
Here comes that little Austin man, that little Clifford. <laughs> Man of God. And he took his flask of oil and he anointed a man named David. Huh? Amen. 13, 14 year old boy. Generals, men that you would have looked at and called, and the prophet even was tricked and said, Surely it's got to be this guy. You know, general, the military, all these things. God said, No, no, listen to him. Is there anybody else? Go get the ruddy lad. Go get the one nobody sees anything good in. Bring him over here. And once the prophet seen him, he stood up. Got his oil. Said this is him. He anointed that young man with the oil. God said, "You're going to be the king." Amen. 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 Come on, somebody. And you don't even see good. And listen, when other people don't even see good in you. People that you love, your own dad, maybe your spiritual parents or pastor, whoever, doesn't see good. Don't trip. Amen. Amen. When they overlook you, don't trip. Amen. Because God's saying, I see you, son. Amen. Go get that little pastor over there on 10th and Troy. Amen. Now, what want all the others made fun of. Go get him, bring him up here. Amen. I'm not praying for anybody today but you, he said. Amen. He anointed me. I walked away from that service, and I'm telling you, all these pastors and, and all these people were over there touching me as I walked by. Hey, give me some of that. Give me some of that. <laughs> I didn't, you know, I, mean, I was just, I just felt the anointing. I was like, take it, man, take it. Amen. I shouldn't have let them because they might have took it all. <laughs> Amen. But I'm telling you, you know, from experience, from the one that said, what are you going to do in Tremont? Like, all you got is your little few church members there. Right. What are you going to do? David said, what do I, what, 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 why don't you guys kill this giant? And they're all scared and trembling. And David said, well, hold on. What do I get? <laughs> you get your dad, no more tax in his life. You get so much money. And my beautiful daughter, he said, I'm in. Where's my sneak <laughs> shop? I ain't doing this for free. He said, huh? Amen. And you know the story. Killed the giant. Yeah. He came king one day. Yeah. And nobody's seen anything in him. God's seen it. Right. Doesn't matter what anybody says about you or picks you or doesn't matter what favor men can give. Your favor comes from the Lord. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather have his favor than anything else in life. Right. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You're a child of God today. Yeah. Yeah. Think like that. That's right. Learn to think like that. Amen. Go watch this video again. Replay it in your, and take your notes and write everything down. And every day you get up, use that in your prayer life. Amen. Use them scriptures. This is what I am. Amen. Hmm? Amen. Nobody else is good. You, you got to see it for yourself. Amen. This is who I am. Because it builds, it builds a confidence in you. Amen. Not a self-confidence, but a God-confidence. And you're able to stand before people and proclaim the word of God without low self-esteem and feeling all this stuff. You're able to stand in that place and say, it ain't me, it's God that works Amen. through me. Amen. And that's when people get blessed and people get saved. Amen. 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 Amen.